two readings today. The first one comes from 2 Kings, chapter 6, verses 8 to, <clears throat> 8 to 17. When the king of Aram was at war with Israel, he would confer with his officers and say, we will mobilize our forces at such and such a place. But immediately, Elisha, the man of God, would warn the king of Israel, do not go near that place, for the Arameans are planning to mobilize their troops there. So the king of Israel would send word to the place indicated by the man of God. Time and again, Elisha warned the king so that he would be on the alert there. The king of Aram became very upset over this and he called his officers together and demanded, which of you is the traitor? Which of you is the traitor that's been informing the king of Israel of my plans? It's not us, my lord, the king. One of the officers replied, Elisha, the prophet in Israel, tells the king of Israel even the words you speak in the privacy of your bedroom. Go and find out where he is, the king, of, the king commanded, so that I can send troops to seize him. Oh, and the report came back. Elisha is at Dothan. So one night the king of Aram sent a great army of many chariots and horses to surround the city. When the servant of the man of God got up early the next morning and went outside, there were troops, horses and chariots everywhere. Oh, sir, what will we do now? The young man cried to Elisha. Don't be afraid, Elisha told him, for there are more on our side than on theirs. Then Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, open his eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the young, young man's eyes and when he looked up, he saw that the Hillside around Elisha was filled with horses and chariots of fire. And the next reading comes from Ephesians. <clears throat> Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray that you constantly asking God, the glorious Father of your Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called his holy people who are, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power. <laughs> this is the word of God. The theme of my sermon today is Open the Eyes of Our Heart, Lord. I'd like to start with a story, you might be familiar with. The story of the Titanic. The Titanic, one of the most famous ships ever, sank because it hit an iceberg. But the Titanic wasn't the only ship to sink this way. Icebergs are huge chunks of ice that have broken off from glaciers. 
we see only about 10% of them above the water. The other 90% is hidden below the surface. This iceberg analogy, analogy can help us understand an important truth. Much of our reality is hidden from our physical eyes. In our Bible story from 2 Kings, Israel was facing constant attacks from the king of Aram. This king kept trying to find ways to attack Israel, but kept failing. He suspected there was a spy among his servants revealing their plans. However, it turned out that it wasn't a spy. It was Elisha, a man of God, who was exposing their plans. The king of Aram decided to capture Elisha to stop the leaks. He surrounded the city where Elisha was staying with horses and chariots, thinking that capturing one unarmed man would be easy. He was confident he would succeed. Often, like the king of Aram and his army, we focus only on what's right in front of us and miss deeper aspects of the situation. It's like seeing just the tip of an iceberg while missing the massive part hidden underwater. For example, someone might seem to have a simple stomach issue, but it could actually be something more serious like gallstones. Or if someone misses deadlines and seems unmotivated, it might look like laziness, but they could be dealing with family issues or mental health challenges. Sometimes people who complain a lot might just be seeking understanding and support. On the other hand, Consider David and Goliath. David appeared as an underdog, but his deep faith in God gave him strength that others couldn't see. Or oh, think about the miracle of the two fish and five loaves of bread, what seemed like a small, insufficient amount of food turned into enough to feed thousands. These examples remind us that what's visible is not always the full story. There is often more beneath the surface. The next morning, when Elisha's servant got up and went outside, he was terrified to see the city surrounded by the enemy army. In a panic, he asked, Oh, sir, what are we going to do now? While Elisha's servant was terrified, 
Elijah remained calm and confident. He told his servant, don't be afraid. Even though they were both facing the same danger, in the same place, and under the same circumstances, their reactions were different. The servant saw only the enemy troops, while Elijah saw beyond it. He saw God's heavenly host, which was much more powerful than their enemies. Elisha had a spiritual insight that allowed him to see what was not visible to the servant. This difference in perspective led to very different outcomes. One felt peace, while the other felt fear. Elijah's don't be afraid was not just a superficial don't worry, be happy saying that you see on t-shirts. It's more than just comforting words. It reflected his deep trust in God's wisdom and power. Relying only on our physical sight can lead to fear and worry. But with spiritual insight, we see God's presence and power bringing us peace even in tough times. Spiritual insight isn't just about seeing visions or dreams which are supernatural gifts. There is nothing wrong with dreams and visions. God can reveal himself however he wishes as he is God. However, spiritual insight here is more about being aware of God's work in our lives, even behind the scenes, and trusting his promises and support. When Elijah saw his servant panicking, he wanted his servant to see God's presence around them something that could only be understood through spiritual sight. So Elijah prayed, Lord, open his eyes and let him see. Similarly, in Ephesians chapter 1, Paul prayed for the believers in Ephesus, asking God to open the eyes of your heart. This phrase, eyes of the heart, refers to gaining spiritual insight, seeing beyond what our physical scenes can detect. Paul wanted them to grasp the hope God has for them, the riches of his glorious inheritance and his great power for those who believe. These truths go beyond what we can perceive with our physical eyes. I'd like to share an inspiring story 
about Christopher Duffley, born blind and autistic. Christopher faced many challenges in his life. His aunt, a devout Christian, played a significant role in his upbringing. She raised him with faith and hope, helping him find the strength and purpose despite the difficulties. Even amidst the challenges, she saw God's purpose in his life. Let me share a video clip with you about this. Thank you. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Christopher Duffley was born in May of 2001. He's actually the son of my youngest brother and his girlfriend. And when I received the phone call from my brother, I found out that he was born at only 26 weeks, one pound, 12 ounces. So he was very premature and he was in critical condition. And there were several nights that we were told that Christopher wouldn't make it through the night. And at that point, I prayed for Christopher. And I just asked God to be with my brother and to do what his will would be. And for a long time, I had no contact with my brother really didn't know what happened to Christopher. And all of a sudden, my heart was moved. Where was my nephew? What happened to him? And on my first phone call to social services, the gentleman knew about Christopher, and he indeed was in foster care. He was totally blind. He had been born with cocaine in his system, and he had a host of other medical issues. My first response to that, or my first feeling to that, was fear. I prayed very intently and I really, I begged the Lord, I said, could you just show me, show me what you would want? And he did, he answered in my heart. He told me, do not be afraid that I will take care of everything. We've had challenges and we've had joys. And one of the greatest joys was to hear Christopher make noise, sing, and keep beat. He really didn't talk till about first grade. So when he sang, it was really neat. And it wasn't shortly around that time that we found out that Christopher had perfect pitch. And he started to do remarkable things. And what a joy and what a prophecy that God gave us that these tears would come and they come out of great joy. And when Christopher sings, open the eyes of my heart, he teaches us to not see everything with our eyes, but to see things the way God sees things through our heart. And indeed, I'm seeing that today. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you.
Christopher's aunt had a spiritual insight to see beyond their struggles. Her insight allowed her to nurture him, helping Christopher grow into an inspiring individual through his music and faith. Now, at 23 years old, Christopher is a powerful witness to God's love and grace and an advocate for people with disabilities. When Elijah prayed, O Lord, open his eyes, God opened his servant's eyes and he saw a hillside full of God's powerful army with horses and chariots of fire. Even though nothing changed around them, the servant could now see behind the scenes that God's protection was much stronger than any danger. Oswald Chambers, a Scottish author, once said, spiritual insight is given by the Holy Spirit, not by human intellect or reason. This quote is shown in the story of Nicodemus, a respected scholar and leader who struggled to understand Jesus' teaching about being born again. It points out that true spiritual understanding comes from the Holy Spirit, not just human knowledge or thinking. Even though Nicodemus was knowledgeable, he lacked the spiritual insight that only the Holy Spirit can offer. Jesus clarified that this insight involved a transformation that goes beyond what we can understand with our minds. The Holy Spirit helps us see things we might otherwise miss, like God's plans and his care for us. The deeper understanding changes how we view our lives, giving us a clear picture of God's purpose and helping us face challenges with more confidence and peace. A good example of this is in 1 Samuel chapter 16. God tells Samuel to choose a new king. Samuel first thinks Eliab, who looks impressive, is the right choice. But God says, I look at the heart, not just the appearance. David, the youngest, and a shepherd is chosen as, a, as king, showing how spiritual insight reveals God's true plans beyond what we can see. Like Paul's prayer, we should seek spiritual insight through the Holy Spirit. C.S. Lewis said, we are to ask God for help to see more clearly the things we have never seen before. The Holy Spirit will open our eyes to the wonders of God's truth. By praying, 
for this insight, we gain a deeper understanding of God's presence and purpose, which guides us with confidence and peace. Before we finish, there's something important to remember. When Elijah saw his servant panicking, he didn't use his spiritual insight to show off. Instead, he prayed, O oh Lord, open his eyes and let him see. Elijah knew only God could reveal this hidden reality to his servant. His prayer wasn't about showcasing his own gifts, but about helping his servant see the same spiritual truth. True spiritual insight also includes kindness and helping others see God's presence and power. In our faith community, we need to remember that we are all in this together. We are divided into you and me, your side and our side. Instead, we are one, one unified body. Our spiritual journeys are connected and we are meant to support and uplift each other. By fostering this sense of unity and support, we can all experience and share in the richness of God's presence and wisdom. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus often pointed out to his disciples that they had eyes but couldn't see. This reminds us that we can also have eyes but still miss what, is, what God is doing in our lives. May God open the eyes of our heart. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being our source of true insight. Like Elisha prayed for his servant, we ask you to open the eyes of our hearts to see your presence and power. Help us not to be blinded by challenges but to recognize your work in our lives. We also pray for our loved ones, asking you to reveal yourself to them as well. Amen.